Bethesda opened the showcase with a dramatic gameplay demo for Redfall and closed it with Todd Howard showing us how deep the rabbit hole goes on Starfield. And we also got a sneak peek at upcoming expansions for Elder Scrolls Online and Fallout 76. Here to break it all down for us is the man, the myth, the legend himself, Pete Hines from Bethesda. Pete, how are you? I'm great. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. So like about a month ago, you all announced some delays for both Redfall and Starfield. So I wanted to give you a chance to like, tell us a little bit about the decision-making process for that. Uh, absolutely. Look, with, with all the time that goes into a game, it, it would be foolish to rush it out the door before it's ready. I think we have continued to sort of examine how we think about games and, and making sure that they are going to meet our players' expectations. Obviously, the last two years have really challenged us from a development standpoint, uh, how we work now largely re remotely, um, while a lot of our folks are not back in the office. And, you know, that has an impact. I, I also think we've been thinking about things like release dates and when do we give those out and and how do we make sure we give one out that, uh, that we actually hit and, and don't have to change later. So, um, it's not something we undertake lightly, but at the end of the day, I think what our fans expect, what Xbox fans, what Bethesda fans expect is a is a high quality game and, and we want to do everything we can to give our teams the time to to fully realize the, the games they're making. Yeah, and I think that's what it's all about, right? Like delivering an amazing experience for the players out there. And so speaking of games, we're just going to jump into it. We're going to start with how the showcase started with Sounds good. Redfall. Mm -hmm. uh, now, before we even get into the game, Arcane's making the game. And I want mm -hmm. you to talk a little bit about the pedigree of Arcane, just in case people don't know. Sure. These folks over there, they're doing their, their thing. Arcane Studios is known for really amazing, um, immersive uh, sims. They, they do any number of things. Um, if, you, if you play games of theirs, Dishonored, Dishonored 2, Prey, there's a lot of common threads you'll find in them. They create um, really amazing, believable worlds. I think that's a big part of their game is, is when you're in Dunwall or you're up on a, a space station in Prey that it, it feels believable. There's a reason why things are the way they are. They're also also a big believers in systems base as opposed to scripted. So they, they really embrace player freedom and sort of giving players the tools to decide, you figure out how you want to complete this mission or get through this area. We're not going to tell you how, we're just going to give you tools and then give you the freedom to go and do. But you know, there's great characters and interesting story. They bring a lot of different elements and then really let the player create the experience they want. And that's what it's all about. Gamers have taken many games and made it their own. And I think the fact that Arcane is making the game with that in mind is super important. Now, how similar or dissimilar would you say this game, Redfall, is from the other Arcane I mean, games? look, on the surface, it's a first-person shooter that you can play solo or with, you know, up to four players. And so immediately you might say, well, it's not a single-player game, so it must be wildly different. And, and don't get me wrong, there's absolutely ways in which it is different. But I think when folks play the game, and even when they see more of the game, I think they'll start to see all of those things about an arcane game that they that they love and appreciate. You know why it's won multiple uh, action game of the year awards for Dishonor, for Dishonor Two, is their ability to to bring all of those things together, really high level of polish, and and let folks experience it. And so I think all of those things we talked about. If you want to play a game by yourself and get a great arcane story, you can absolutely do that in Redfall. But you can also do things that you haven't been able to do in an arcane game, like experience it with friends and, and find out sort of how the whole can become greater than the sum of the parts, like playing it off of each um, character's abilities. You saw some of that in the demo that we showed. You know, I think the more that people appreciate that, you, you almost are going to want to try and play Redfall a couple of different ways. You might want to play it by yourself a little bit, play it with others, and it's a game that allows you to do either or both of those things, however you see fit. I'm glad you talked about playing with friends because I'm taking applications for friends to help me get through Redfall. Um, can, can, can I put my name on that list? Be, I, I, I'm down to a little... Be, it'd be an honor. Pete. Keep me on that list. All right, we we need to go it. explore Redfall together. I'm, I'm excited. I can't wait for that. And so let's talk a little bit more about the game. Now, um, you know, between the trailer that we saw last year at the reveal, mm -hmm. as well as this one that we just saw, uh, I feel like Redfall reminded players of other co-op shooters, like uh, Left 4 Dead, for example. Mm -hmm. What makes Redfall unique? Um, again, it's one of those things, like, if you if you watch just, like, combat footage, you might look at Left 4 Dead or Back 4 Blood or, or any of these things and go, oh, I see multiple characters facing a bunch of enemies, and, like, so it's the same game. But I think that's that would be doing a disservice, that it's 
all of the things that take place in between the combat as well as the combat itself, sort of combining different skills and abilities and in, in the way that you do, you know, Layla dropping down a, an elevator using her her powers that Jacob can use to get up top on a on a roof and provide cover. You know, you have different characters who play roles really well, how you choose to use Brebone, um, the robot, all of those things come into, again, allowing the players not to say, here's a set of rules and you can only use, like, no, here's just some stuff that you can go off into this amazing sort of dynamic, ever-changing world and sort of experience and explore for yourself. And you come back the next day and it'll look and feel like a different experience, even though you're in the exact same part of the game. I mean, I think those are the kinds of things that Arcane does that really um, bring that sort of extra special element that makes their game so compelling. Yeah, compelling and fresh. So I'm excited for Redfall, and you said it here uh, for everyone to see that we're going to be playing together. So I'm going to hold you to that. Uh, absolutely. You got the proof. All right. Can't wait. Oh, awesome. So let's talk about Elder Scrolls Online. Mm -hmm. Now, I wanted to talk about the team philosophy, because I hear that uh, the team is actually banned from saying things like, now is the perfect time to My play. My least favorite saying is there's never oh, no. been a better time to play a game like we all say that <laughs> yes games always get oh, better we man. know that the, the thing that we love about where elder scrolls online is 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 going is their ability to continually refresh the experience for players provide new experiences like going to high isle a place they've never been in an elder scrolls game it does a lot of things like story and intrigue there's a lot of politics in high isle different factions and and the the conflict that's going on there and again a, a way that you can jump in and play by yourself and experience it at, by yourself, even though it's an MMO, but the real special sauce of Elder Scrolls Online is our amazing community. They're so welcoming, they're so helpful. You know, if you need a little bit of help, if you need a lot of help, they're there for, um, they're, they're there for you to help explain, to, you know, to make sure you have a fun experience. And honestly, like that is such a huge part for an online game of creating an environment where anybody, no matter whether you just started playing or you've been playing for eight years, can have a good experience no matter how you decide to engage with it. I love that you mentioned that. A community is such, a, as you mentioned, is such a huge part of any online game. And so for players who may not have played Elder Scrolls, who are, like you said, looking to jump in, to know that they have that community backing them uh, that's going to help them guide them in their journey mm -hmm. is super exciting. So, but I want to talk about Fallout a little bit. Okay. Um, huge milestone recently, 25 years of Fallout. It can rent a car even now. <laughs> At this point, right? <laughs> We're talking about it. All right, so this has to mean something uh, super special to the Absolutely. team. Absolutely, and, and and look, we are as aware of anybody. Like, this this franchise did not start with Bethesda. It's one that we took on along the way, and, and our intent is not just to, to pay homage to, like, Bethesda Fallout. Like, no, we mean all Fallout, because what this series has done, what it, what it meant to us as players when we went and played those games, played the original Fallout, Fallout 2, um, and then what the franchise has become and sort of growing and finding an even, you know, a new audience with Fallout 3, Fallout 4, Fallout New Vegas, uh, Fallout 76 is something we really want to celebrate. And honestly, the, you know, what's going on in Fallout 76 with the pit and your ability to continue to push the boundaries in an online game of story and meaningful player choice and as you're going along making decisions that kind of um, matter and have a real impact, I think, is is important in the evolution of Fallout 76 and just honestly how far that game has come from its launch. Like we're keenly aware of how that launch went, but we are also keenly aware of the incredible amount of effort and dedication from all of our teams across Bethesda to say like, we believe in this thing and we want to give the fans more of what they want and the kind of experiences that they want. And where Fallout 76 is now is truly remarkable when you go back and look at sort of where we were and how far we've come and, and honestly how much cool stuff is in store in the pit. It's, it's going to be super fun. Excited to jump in. And again, that's one of those things that I'm sure you guys attribute to the community, giving that feedback. You know, that, that 76 community, again, not just in the game, but what they do for for each other to support other folks in the community, what they have done to raise funds for worthwhile causes. Like, it's not just an amazing group of gamers. It's an amazing group of human beings and, and honestly, one that we're honored to interact with and be a part of every day. I love that, Pete. Before you make me cry, we're going to move on to Starfield, all <laughs> right? Okay. All right, so let's talk about it. Starfield, end of the show, I got to say, watching the trailer, breathtaking. It's one of those things from the different locations and just seeing the difference between that moon versus the populated city, just amazing. The dog fighting, uh, the, just everything was so awesome. The team really outdid themselves. It's one like. of those things about a Bethesda Games Studios game that I always love. And, and it's been the case, honestly, since, you know, I, I worked on Morrowind and Oblivion and all those games that, you know, we talked about. And ev for every single one, you cannot pin 
people down to, oh, it's about this, because it's not. Like, ultimately what those games are are massive sandboxes where they give players just ridiculous amounts of freedom to say, you go figure out what kind of game you want to play and what kind of experience you want to have, because that's what this game is about. It's not us prescribing and saying, you have to do these things. And like, no, it's about creating this huge uh, sandbox with over a thousand planets that you can completely explore and say, yeah, but you don't have to. Like, it's entirely up to you to figure out what, what is fun for me. Do I want story? Do I want to join factions? Do I want to, you know, build outposts and gather resources to build more cool stuff? The team really puts all of those tools in the player's hands and step back and says, now it's time for you to, to tell the story of Starfield, which is your story, which is going to be different than mine, which is going to be different than everybody else's. And I think that's, that's really where the magic of a Bethesda Game Studios game happens. Speaking about the scope of everything, Todd said that this is what an epic RPG is. What, what does Bethesda define an epic RPG as? I, I think, again, it's, it's sort of leaning into, look, there's a lot of folks who take a lot of different approaches on what does an open world mean. And Bethesda Game Studios always pushes themselves to the most freedom and least limitations, right? Where the items in the world are all real things. You walk into a store and there's a bunch of weapons or whatever. Like, that's not just art on a countertop. Like, you could pick those up. You could steal them and run out of the you can create chaos like we don't want to put too many limits on what the player is or isn't allowed to do we love it when players say i wonder what happens if and then they try it and then they get to see like oh my lord chaos ensued and it was insanity everybody was shooting at me and like that's i think the beauty of bethesda game studios and the and the number of ways that they push for you to explore that right it's not just one it's you could spend thousands of hours doing nothing but shipbuilding and like focus that as all you're about and that's okay. But you could also be about exploring every planet and finding all of the good and that's okay. Or you could just play the main story and be like, I want a kind of experience that I'm guided through so that I kind of get to see stuff and I might stop here and there. Oh, there's a cool side quest that I got. But you know, I want something that sort of leads me through because I'm a little, you know, it can be a little daunting to say you can go do whatever I want. Like, ooh, I don't know what I should do. So th some folks want a little bit of a guided path or to understand where the fun is and no approach is wrong. Like for me, that's epic because it says we aren't putting any limits on what you can or can't do. We're going to set you loose and just sit back and watch the, the beauty that you create with your own stories and the way that you solve problems or choose to spend your time in this world we've created. I love that. And, I, you know, what you said about, um, you know, those moments that maybe you, you experience that I don't, like, those are some of the best moments if I think back to playing RPGs when I'm discussing with my friends. Oh, did you see that? No, I didn't see that. Where did you see it? And, and having them go out and find it. So I think that's going to be one of those we, things. We talk about that a lot, that sort of water cooler moment. Exactly. Of, like, you come yeah. in the next day and you talk to everybody about, what you did and you were like wait i did that quest but i did this completely different thing and you sort of start to appreciate all of the choices that you could have made you didn't even realize were an option like oh i didn't even think about doing that like oh yeah i just ran in and stole his ship and shot all of his crew members and took off like you can do that like oh yeah you can do anything like that i think that is um, a special part of a bethesda game studios game and and when we say epic rpg we mean all of the stories all of them all right, you just gave me some ideas for stealing people's ships. Uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, that's going to be top on the list to do in Starfield. Now, um, we saw quite a bit of combat and action in the game. That seems to also be, in, in addition to exploring and everything, that seems to be a, another huge focus of the game. Uh, absolutely. I mean, you know, look, if you look at a game like Skyrim, which, like, everybody's played Skyrim at this point, it, it can, you know, a combat is a big part of that unless you decide it's not. Like, if you're one of those folks that says, actually, I'm going to do the alchemy thing, and I just go off and pick flowers and make potions and, like, live another life in another world this way, then combat isn't part of it. But, look, we know in an epic RPG, there's always bad people, they, you know, shooting at you. Sometimes you got to return fire, and there's a lot of fun to be had there. And so, you know, providing a lot of different skills that sort of determine how good you are in combat combined with all the different weapons in the game and then you layer in ship combat and all of these other things, it starts to sort of paint a picture of just how broad or how deep the rabbit hole goes. It's going to be so impressive. Um, and you touched on it a little bit and I want to talk about it because this was one watching the, the video, the demo, um, what I saw and it really caught my eyes around the ship. Um, it's not just getting in the ship and that's your ship. There's so much behind it. Can you so talk much. about it a little bit? Yeah, like every ship is customizable to the nth degree and not just like cosmetically 
I want my ship to look like this or look like that, though obviously that's totally a thing that you could do if you, all you care about is cosmetics. But it goes much deeper than that in terms of like what kind of shields you have, what kind of weapons you have, like what kind of ship are you building? What do you want it to be good at? What trade-offs are you willing to make or not? And then the other part of it is, of course, well, you can't just, like, it's a spaceship. Those aren't cheap. So you have to figure out, like, how am I going to do this? Where do I get the resources to build this stuff? What kind of, you know, skills do I need to level up to improve different parts of my ship beyond, you know, what I could do without those skills? So there's a lot of, again, choices in terms of you get to decide that, how much you want to Put into that or not? Do you just want to give somebody money for the parts that you want? Do you want to build it? All of those things are, are sort of part of the fun of deciding how much do you want to interact with this and how do you want to interact with it? Absolutely. I mean, just as you mentioned, the scope, the level of player agency, something that I feel like is going to just make Starfield such a, a special experience. So between Redfall, ESO, Fallout 76, and Starfield, you all are just we got a few the games game. coming. Yeah, we got a few games coming out. It's going to be so great. Um, Pete, thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course, Pete. Now, coming up, we'll hear from our friends around the world, including Squanch Games, Obsidian Entertainment, Playground Games, and of course, Xbox fans like you. But first, let's hear from the creators of one of the world's most popular Battle Royale games.